such a beautiful day today. I hope everyone is enjoying their weekend. Happy, happy Memorial Day to those that served and that have passed protecting the country that you love. We, but look at the sky cover. Wow, pretty amazing today. So, today I'm gonna be playing around with the IRX 150 micro and I'm gonna be playing around with my Sony A77 with my Tamron SP 90mm micro. And we're out here by the lake just trying to capture something pretty amazing. It is a beautiful day. And I'm bored. So as I'm taking pictures with the Yi M1 4K mirrorless Micro Four Thirds camera, I'm getting some really stunning images with the IRX 150 combination. Now I am shooting with my Sony and the Tamron SP90 as well to not do a comparison, to see which micro lens that I like the most now as of 2019. That will make practical sense. 2017, 2018 was all the buzz about the Sony. The Tamron SP90. Well, this year, let's see which micro lens works best for me. But it's amazing what I can capture with micro lenses. great tool a diffuser since I don't have a micro flash anymore I have to consider myself using diffusers now it's about 2 a.m. 2 30 p.m. and in the afternoon so the sun and sun rays and the sunlight it's very harsh this is going to give me some flexibility to soften that beautiful light coming from the sun so I'm actually what I'm doing is taking one uh, light source and creating a second light source with a diffuser if that makes sense to you guys but I also wanted to show you guys you don't need a micro flash to do micro photography you can always find light around your house somewhere and you know it's based on creativity but this is how you use your tools every day uh, as I was shooting with both lenses from the Tamron and from the Irix now both have cons and both have pros i'm gonna get to that at the end of the video or maybe sometime when i actually talk about a topic but both show that they are excellent lenses for micro photography or for portraits or for a little bit of b-roll but when i'm shooting on the tamron sp90 i notice sometimes i can get the reach that i need but sometimes it doesn't get me the reach that i want but with the irix lens it gives me the reach that i want but sometimes a little bit too much of that reach is not what I needed. So I need to back up when I'm shooting subjects. Now, I'm shooting on a Micro Four Thirds with the IRIX lens. Now, if this is on a crop sensor, the focal length will be different. Since it's on a Micro Four Thirds, I have to shoot that 300 mil equivalent. I do have it adapted on the Micro Four Thirds camera. Now, on a Sony crop sensor, now, I'm going to tell you the differences and what kind of complications I have to go through to actually get my images the way I think you guys would actually shoot in the real world. So as a travel photographer, I'm just trying to compare two lenses. This is not a battle royale against Tamron and Irix. Both companies have both excellent optics. Now, with the Irix 100, I noticed that there is no corroborations. There's no purple fringing or blue fringing. 
With the Tenron, now when I'm shooting water drops with both lenses, I notice that the Tenron demonstrates some color finishing, uh, just a bit. I can clean it up in, in, in editing, but I refuse to do that sometimes, so I go with the Irix. Now, this is why the Irix will win in that category, because now as we talk about purple fringing and color fringing, there's none on the Irix. It, it's showing very good potential. Now, there's some ghosting a little bit on the Tamron and also slightly a little bit on the Irix, but you cannot even tell if I show you some of these images, and maybe you can tell if you're pixel peeping. Now, I did one of the complications when I'm trying to actually shoot some of my images. With this Sony A mount, I noticed that my EVF is not demonstrating in real time in the EVF when I'm actually shooting. So, I have to press this button up down on the corner here on the bottom where the lens is mounted. And that button shows me in real time what I'm about to shoot. So I noticed that I'm having EVF issues for, on this camera. So this is a, pretty much an old camera. I brought it second hand, so, but other than that, it works fine. Image quality from the crop sensor does really well with the Tamron SP90. With the Iris 150, oh my God, it's just amazing how sharp and detail, and the clarity, the color representation, because this Micro Four Thirds camera is the EM1. Now, this is using a Sony IMX269 sensor. This is also a Sony sensor. This is why I wanted to make the comparison and see which one is better. I'm not going to vote on the Micro Four Thirds and I'm going to tell you reasons why. This is a transparent mirrorless camera. This is a mirrorless camera. This is giving me accurate light. This is killing off light through that, trans that transparent mirror that has to flip up. Uh, but other than that, uh, yeah. Now, let's talk about bokeh. Bokeh is one of those things that people are very opinionated about. Some people say it's not enough bokeh or it's just too creamy, it looks unreal. But the bokeh on the Irix would just blow you away. You may think that the Irix bokeh is just something I would add and post, but it's not. That is what I'm getting on the Micro Four Thirds. So if you do have a Micro Four Thirds, Mind you that this is a Canon uh, EF mount mounted on the Micro Four Thirds. You're gonna get <laughs> smooth bokeh every time. Also with the Tamron, you get smooth bokeh. But if you are going to do in micro photography, I suggest that maybe you want to buy, I don't know, a micro rail system, which works really well when you want to actually pinpoint and have precise. Uh, sharpness, focus, detail, and make sure that when you are using micro, uh, the micro rails that you use the adjustments based on your reach of your micro lens. Now you want to go forward or you want to go back. But other than that, now the iris doesn't have a code in to prevent scratches, but the Tamar does. Now I use both lens hoods and all the photos so I wasn't able to actually really test lens flare if you guys are looking for that comparison but I would tell you right now the Tenron has great control of lens flare but there's some the Irix shows really the exact same uh, specifications as the Tenron when it comes down to sun flare but a little bit better than the Tenron but other than that it's just an amazing setup that I have here. Two lenses that can do both, but one stands out the most. Now keep in mind that the Irix is a manual focus lens. So, and this has autofocus and manual controls. So you don't have the options on the Irix. This has a focus limiter on the Tenron, but this one does not have a focus limiter on the Irix. So you may want to consider, I don't know, maybe taking the time out to go out and just think about which lens is gonna be practical for you when you're going out to do shooting. Now, I use both lenses for everything. It's a versatile tool, in my opinion, but I'm gonna go with the Irix. Even if I know I don't have a crop sensor at this time, I'm pretty sure that I will be satisfied with the image quality, even on crop sensor. And this is, like I said, this is not a comparison. This is not to say, 
Now, I was able to use single point autofocus on the A-mount system with the Tower SP90. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to use the IREX uh, autofocus system because this is a manual control, but on this particular camera, I was able to control the aperture, which does have a CPU aperture control and autofocus, so single point autofocus that is, but on this particular one, I was only able to actually keep the lens open at f2.8 because I mounted this on a micro four thirds that doesn't have a CPU control metadata uh, adapter. So everything was at f2.8, so you guys can see at f2.8 on this particular lens, it's exceptional. And I'm pretty sure when it gets down to f8, f14, it's going to be even much sharper. But with the A mount, ten, the Tenron, I was really, really impressed. I'm still impressed after like two and a half, three years of owning this particular cam, uh, lens for A mount. I'm pretty happy and pretty satisfied with the results. So you should be too if you own either of these lenses. Now, when it comes down to focusing, I'm having a little bit of difficulty deciding because I am a manual shooter. But when I need to get the shot done, when it comes down to microphotography, the AMA executes it much faster than I'm manually focusing. When I'm manually focusing, I know I want to be precise and want to be particular. That's just me, just particular. But with the Tamron, I'm executing my photos much faster, so it saves me time. But with the IUX 450 micro lens, it takes a little bit of time because this focus throw is pretty long and has a long focus throw. With the Tenron, it doesn't have that long focus throw. So it's up to you guys to decide which lens will be better. Like I said, this is not really a battle. This is not really one of those comparisons. This is just me as the panda photographer trying to provide content so you guys can have an understanding which lens is my favorite and I'm going to have to apply here and say that the IDX 150mm micro lens is so much my favorite. Even though it's a manual focused lens that I have not mounted on micro four thirds, it's just that for some reason I just like the color edition on the IDX a little bit much better. I do like the contrast more on the Tenron, but I just like the contrast mixed with that color edition that is giving me what I'm actually shooting and, and it's just outstanding performance lens. I did use a diffuser when shooting most of my subjects uh, because on this particular one I'm not allowed to actually adapt third-party ND filters or polarizers without using the hood so I have to either opt out on the hood and use a polarizer or ND filter. But with the IRIX 150, I'm able to use ND filters, polarizers on top of each other and still maintain using the hood. All right, so you guys have seen it. It's morning time and I'm basically just giving you guys a rundown. IRIX is one of my favorite new lenses of 2019. It's exceptionally sharp. There's no color aberrations, no ghosting, no color finishing, barely nothing, no, really no lens flare problems slightly a little bit but is well well executed and controlled but the Tenron I love the Tenron so much but it's not that I'm giving up on the Tenron I'm going to use both lenses still this is that now I have a very new favorite and I gotta have my favorite lenses to demonstrate in the real world as a travel photographer that travels I have to give content that makes sense to photographers that are looking for options. And those options are which lens should you go for? The Tanron SP90 or the IRIX 150? Do you want that extra reach? Now keep in mind, as I said, should know micro for thirds with the IRIX. So but this should give you some clarifications that you know which lens you should go for. Now if this video doesn't do justice, I do apologize and that's the way it is in the real world. It's very early in the morning, so my, my thinking process is not 100% there quite yet, but it's er really early. But other than that, guys, if you guys like the content, please do let me know with comments down 
below. If you guys want to support the channel, there's a PayPal donation link in the description. It really does help me out to make more content like this, but also keep the lights on. And as a travel photographer, micro photography is fun. So go out there and shoot and make sure that if you do choose the right lens for micro photography, you do you would do very, very excellent. And trust me, take your time and always menu focus when you're doing or single point autofocus if you have a lens that has single point autofocus. But yeah, other than that, subscribe, like, and share. Then I will see you guys in the next video. You guys take care. Happy shooting.